Chapter 3. Stereotype Behavior. The stereotype is a French word derived from the Greek word sigma tau epsilon rho epsilon, stereos, and tau pi omicron, typos, which mean a solid impression on one or more idea slash theory. The term comes from the printing trade and was first adopted in 1798 by Fermin Didot to describe a typography duplicated printing plate. Typography is the work of arranging and setting types, and then printing from them. The first reference to stereotype was in 1850 as an image perpetuated without change. It was first used in modern psychology in 1922 as a public opinion. The generalizations are used in North America, as the perceived stereotypical behavior. To characterize or regard as a stereotype is to give a fixed form to a person, place, or thing. In social psychology, stereotype refers to an overgeneralized belief about a particular category of people. Generally, on any given level people's perceptions are influenced by their expectations. Stereotype starts in childhood, at church, home, school, and especially with neighbors. Stereotypes can be positive, negative, or neutral. Stereotypes can be beliefs about people based on their membership in a particular group. Ethnic stereotypes are widespread and shared by members of social groups. Stereotypes exist in different cultures, ethnic groups, and sub-races. Stereotypes based on ethnicity, gender, or occupation are common in many societies. Psychologist believes that it is a natural aspect of human behavior and that it is beneficial to each group to identify with one's ethnic group. Racial Stereotypes A famous study done on racial stereotypes was published in 1933 by Brawley and Katz. The reported questionnaire was completed by students at Princeton University in the USA. Students there had clear but negative stereotype views, these were white Americans at the time, and other ethical groups in America still were embodying slavery. Their focus of other ethnic groups included Americans as industrious and intelligent, Jews as mercenary and shrewd, Japanese as shrewd and sly, and Negroes as happy-go-lucky, ignorant, lazy, and musical. They viewed the white subrace as ambitious, industrious, and progressive. Later studies conducted in 1951 and 1967 were more positive, but ethnic groups still held critical characteristic views of other ethnic groups. Since then other ethnic groups in America have been able to achieve a better quality of life, without embodying a slave. When comparing discrimination to prejudice concepts, discrimination is a behavioral component of the cognitive mental processes, whereas prejudice is the effective component of stereotyping. Verbalizing a prejudice can be perceived as expressing ill-founded ignorance or prejudices with a need for justification. People who are explicit stereotypes tend to express the unconsciousness of individuals that appear to have no awareness or control over their ethical norms of which may contain conceptualization theories and contradictory elements, and can be used as forms of discipline. Explicit stereotypes are unwilling to rethink one's attitude or behavior. Many people argue that racial stereotypes are a way to justify racist attitudes and behavior. Prejudicing tends to legitimize discrimination, it justifies one group's dominance over another. Prejudice can boost the self-esteem of stereotyping people, and lower the self-esteem of people on the receiving end. Either way, both the person on the receiving end and the person doing the prejudging generally have behavior issues that need to be worked through. The overall perspective of racial stereotypes, it is very common to overgeneralize either by belittling other subraces or favoring your own, and every ethnic group has racial stereotypes of other groups. According to the contact hypothesis, prejudice declines when in-groupies become more familiar with the attitudes, customs, food, music, and norms of people of an out-groupie. Contact with the out-groupie helps people to see the diversity among its members. Hostility between an in-groupie and out-groupie increases when the groups compete. Researchers have found that hostility between the groups decreases when those groups have to cooperate to reach a shared goal. In such situations, people in the two groups tend to feel they belong to one larger group rather than two separate groups. Research show conflict and prejudice among groups can be reduced if four conditions are met, the groups have economic opportunity, equality in terms of legal status, and political power. Two authorities advocate equal rights. Also, the groups have opportunities to interact formally and informally with each other. While the groups cooperate to reach a common goal. Image vs. Reputation. Image is a physical likeness or representation of an animal, person, or thing, referencing something such as a painting, photograph, sculpture, or something otherwise made visible. A mental representation of an appearance, company, conception, embodiment, figure, formation, idea, idol, illusion, notion, reflection, type, etc. In psychology, it is a mental representation of something previously perceived, in the absence of the original stimulus. General reputation is the estimation in which a person or thing is held, especially by the community or public. Of which it is possible to achieve a favorable repute or good name that isn't ruined by a reputation of misconduct. Image or reputation of a social entity refers to, an organization, a person, or social group, and is an opinion about that entity, generally as a result of evaluation according to the socially set criteria. 
Reputation is a highly dynamic phenomenon in two distinct senses, it is subject to change, especially as an effect of corruption, deception, errors, etc. 2. It emerges as an effect of a multilevel bidirectional process. Reputation is an efficient mechanism of social control in natural societies. It is a subject of study in management, social and technological sciences. Research has found it takes approximately 3.5 years to fully recover reputation. The influence extends to competitive settings such as communities, firms, groups, organizations, and institutions. Reputation acts on various levels of agency individually and superindividually. On the superindividual level, it interests collectives, communities, groups, and abstract social entities such as civilizations, corporations, countries, cultures, firms, and organizations. It affects the circumstances of everyday life to relationships between nations. Reputation is a fundamental instrument of social order, based upon spontaneous social control and its distribution. While the concept of reputation is considered a component of identity, it is important in business, communities, education, and other fields. Reputability is rooted in being an honorable and respectable person, of which involve consistently being a law-abiding citizen, and upholding standards. Discontentment with the responsibilities of being a law-abiding citizen is rooted in distrust and lack of embracing the national flaws and self-glory. While it does take courage to stand for something that is rooted in aspects of being a citizen, it doesn't take courage to complain.